Hi there, another medical surgical nursing. Ang alay ko sa'yo for today because we are going to discuss Gia Barre. Yes, GBS. If you want to know more about that, stay tuned. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Neil Gavin. I'm a registered nurse and I do have a degree in medical surgical nursing. I create a nursing educational content to help nursing students with their studies. If that's something that you are interested in, consider subscribing. If you're already a subscriber though, thank you so much for your love and support. I see you. I upload my nursing educational videos two to three times in a week. Don't miss that. Ad. Subscribe now. Hit the notification bell so that you will be the very first to watch my newest uploads. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends because that will really help me know that you like to see more contents like this. Without further ado, you ready? Let's do this. Hi nurses, for today's video, we are going to discuss about GBS. Yes, Gia Barre nga po ang ating discussion. And this is another topic under your medical surgical nursing. I'm going to provide you everything that you need to know when it comes to your Gia Barre. Now, in order for me to do that, I need to switch back to my PC and I'll see you guys in a bit. Hi everybody, welcome to our formal discussion ng yung Gia Barre syndrome, yung GBS. Yes, this is another discussion sa ating medical surgical surgical nursing. Kung narinig mo na itong Gia Barre, ito po siya. So, let us be your nursing study guide sa pag-aaral mo ng iyong GBS. Alright? So, let's begin our discussion with our objectives for today. On this lecture, we're gonna have the description of your Gia Barre. We're gonna discuss the risk factors, clinical manifestations, diagnosis, medical complications, medical management, and of course, your nursing considerations. Handa ka na, let's begin. Alright, so, First stop description. So what is Gia Barre, you guys? Now, no one knows what causes GBS, but we know something about what happens. In GBS, the body's immune system does not work right. It works to attack the body itself. We call this type of disorder an autoimmune disease. Familiar ka na sa concept ng autoimmune diseases where our body fights, um, attacks its own antibodies, you know, parang self-destructing, ganun ang nangyayari sa kanya. In GBS, it seems that the immune system prevents the nerves from sending signals to the muscles. The muscles then receive few or no signals telling them what to do. It also is difficult for muscles to send signals back to the brain. The result is muscle weakness and sometimes numbness and tingling. Alright, hallmarks are na yung Barre is muscle weakness. Now, anyone can get GPS no matter what age or ethnic background. Older people are more prone to get it. Some people get GPS a few days or weeks after they have a virus, such as flu or diarrhea. In some people, surgery or certain vaccines may trigger it because the cause is not known. There is no way to prevent GBS. Now, risk factors, you guys. Autoimmune disease. Now, GBS is more common for people aged 20 to 50 years old. Association with swine flu immunizations. Frequently preceded by mild respiratory and intestinal na infection. Ano yon Yung pagka nakakaroon ka ng pneumonia or um, sometimes kapag merong diarrhea. Ayan. So these are your risk factors, you guys. Alright, let's proceed. So what are the clinical manifestations of your GBS? So these are the signs and symptoms of your Gia Barre or yung GBS. Now I want you to remember you guys na, na the signs and symptoms of GBS, you guys, begins in the lower extremities in a sense bilateral bilaterally, excuse me, meaning both extremities ang affected pababa, pataas, okay? Na ito yung mga signs and symptoms. Gusto kong tandaan mo to. You have your weakness, which is your hallmark sign of GBS. What else? Ataxia. What is ataxia, you guys? This is a degenerative disease of the nervous system. Now, many symptoms of ataxia nga po mimic those of being drunk, such as slurred speech, stumbling, falling, and in coordination. These symptoms are caused by damage to the cerebellum, the part of the brain that is responsible for coordinating movement. What else? Bilateral paresthesia progressing to paralysis. What did I tell you? Bilateral ascending um, manifestations of symptoms sa iyong GBS. Now, the signs and symptoms nga po ng yung GBS progresses rapidly over 2 to 3 weeks. So, ibig sabihin ganun siya kabilis. And with minimal muscle atrophy. Once again, these are the signs and symptoms of your GBS. Alright. 
All right, so what is the diagnostics? Now, Guillain-Barré syndrome can be difficult to diagnose in its earliest stage. Its signs and symptoms are similar to those of other neurological disorders and may vary from person to person. But here are some diagnostic tools that we can do to determine if the patient is having Guillain-Barré. Now, spinal tap or your lumbar puncture. A small amount of fluid is withdrawn from the spinal canal in your lower back. Electromyography. Thin needle electrodes are inserted into the muscles your doctor wants to study. The electrodes measure nerve activity in the muscles. What else? Nerve conduction studies. On this procedure, an electrode is tapped to the skin above your nerves. A small shock is passed through the nerve to measure the speed of nerve signals. What are the medical complications of your GPS? Now you guys, before I proceed with this discussion, I want you to understand that most people recover fully from GBS, but some people have long-term nerve damage. Receivable weakness can be seen in 30% of GPS cases after 3 years. About 3% of the cases may suffer a relapse of muscle weakness and tingling sensations many years after the initial attack. 3% to 5% of GPS patients may die from complications which includes the following. Naalala mo tong picture natin? Ito siya. Kung gusto mo mag-take ng screenshot after nitong um, discussion natin, please do so para makatulong sa'yo, okay? Paralysis of muscles that control breathing. Yes, what are the ultimate complication or the life-threatening complication of your GPS? It is a respiratory problem or your lung collapse. Yung diaphragm natin, major muscle for respiration, right? So imagine, kapag umakyat, um, nag-progress yung, yung, yung GPS at nakaabot ito sa ating lungs o sa ating lung pa rin kaya mapwedeng maapektuhan ng ating respiration, yung ating paghinga. Ano pa? Sepsis or yung blood infection. What else? Pulmonary embolism or lung clots cardiac arrest and you don't want that so once again you guys these are what you called the complications of your GBS. So what are the medical management? Now on this slide, we're going to discuss supportive treatment, immunotherapy, and rehabilitation services. Now, the goal of treatment is to lessen the severity of symptoms and maintain vital functions normal while nervous system recovers. In GBS Singapore, patients are usually hospitalized so that they can be monitored closely. A multidisciplinary approach is required in the acute phase combining supportive and disease modifying therapy. Ito yung ating plasma exchange or high dose immunoglobulins. First up, let's discuss about supportive therapy. Ano ba yung mga included dito? You have your respiratory management, cardiovascular management, prophylaxis for DVT, and pain management. Now, let's discuss each. When you talk about your respiratory management, remember that the respiratory status should be monitored in all patients suffering from GBS. Up to 30% of the patients need ventilatory support or airway protection. Why? Kasi nga, pinaprevent natin yung lung collapse o yung ating respiratory complications. Cardiovascular management. The hemodynamic monitoring of pulse and blood pressure should be started early. Hypotensive, hypertensive episodes may be managed accordingly. Prophylaxis for prevention of deep vein thrombosis on yung DVT. Remember, meron din siyang complication na blood clot. Ito yun siya. There is an increased risk of DVT formation of blood clots in DBS patients due to immobility Mobility. The hypercoagulation increased tendency toward blood clotting from treatments such as intravenous immunoglobulins. Medication and support stockings may be used in non-ambulatory patients until they are able to walk independently. Now, sa ating pain management naman, you need to remember that safe and effective drugs are required for pain management in acute phase. Now, immunotherapy naman tayo. Immunotherapy comprises IVIG or plasma exchange. Ano-ano ito? Ito po siya. Intravenous immunoglobulins o yung IVIG and plasma pheresis, plasma exchange. I-discuss natin to isa-isa. When you talk about your IVIG, high doses of immunoglobulin can help to block the antibodies causing GPS. Immunoglobulin contains normal, healthy antibodies from donors. Now, this should begin within two weeks from the onset of symptoms. Para nga naman maagapan na natin yung progression ng complication ng iyong GPS. Now, plasma pheresis. Plasma pheresis is a process that filters the blood and removes harmful antibodies. Plasma exchange is most beneficial when initiated within 7 to 14 days from the onset of the disease. What else? Rehabilitation services. Remember may weakness, muscle weakness. It also, you need to really promote ambulation or mo 
rehabilitation sa iyong pasyente. And when you talk about your rehabilitation services, you need to remember that it should start in the form of physical therapy in the acute phase of the disease. It comprises gentle strengthening involving isometric, isotonic, isokinetic, and manual resistive and progressive resistive exercises. It should be focused on proper limb positioning, posture, orthotics, and nutrition. Now, sana malino sa iyo yung iyong mga medical management, okay? Now, let's talk about your nursing considerations. So, nurses, I lists um, some of the nursing responsibilities and intervention that you can do for your patient who's suffering from GBS. All right, let's proceed. So, nurses, here are some of your nursing intervention and responsibilities. Explain ko sa inyo. Siyempre, hindi mawawala yung assessment. Now, what you're gonna assess, the frequency, symmetry, and depth of breathing. Observe for increased work of breathing and evaluate skin color, temperature, and capillary refill. Now, progressive weakness of both the inspiratory and the expiratory muscles may lead to respiratory distress that may necessitate the need for mechanical ventilation. That is very important for us to determine yung assessment natin, very crucial yun. Kasi nga, ang pinaka na iniiwasan natin dito is respiratory distress. So, assessment is very important. What else? Observe for signs of respiratory fatigue, such as shortness of breath, decreased attention span, and impaired cough. Why? This may indicate the neuromuscular respiratory failure or decreased lung capacity. Auscultate lung sounds for any changes and notifies the physician immediately. Why? Pulling of secretions and increased airway resistance may impede the diffusion of gases resulting in airway complications such as pneumonia. Assess oxygen saturation and review clients' arterial blood gases results. Why? This will determine oxygenation status and provides information about the effectiveness of ventilation given or the need to adjust the parameters. Now, keep the head of the bed elevated at around 35 to 45 degrees. Uh, rationale nito, you guys, because we need to increase lung or promote lung expansion and cough effort minimizes the work of breathing and the risk for aspiration of secretions. All right, perform chest facial therapy, which includes postural drainage, chest percussion, chest vibration, turning, deep breathing, and coughing exercises. Why? Because this will facilitate mobilization and clearance of airway secretions. What else? Anticipate the need for mechanical ventilator as ordered. Kaya nga lagi meron tayong dapat itichube at ano pa mechbent sa gilid o sa bedside ng iyong pasyente. Dapat nakaredy yon. Okay? Ideally, dapat nandun yon. Now, mechanical ventilation may be required for an extended period to support the pulmonary pulmonary function and adequate oxygenation. Weaning from mechanical ventilation happens when the respiratory muscles can sustain spontaneous respiration and keep adequate tissue oxygenation. And lastly, you have your suction secretions as appropriate, especially if the client is intubated or undergone a tracheostomy. Why? Because this will promote adequate clearance of secretions and prevents aspiration. You guys, these are your nursing responsibilities. And I also included and discussed the rationale of each, okay? Now, thank you so much, you guys, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more nursing educational videos. Let me know if you have other nursing topics that you want us to do on the comments section below. Abangan nyo po yung next natin mga video for this week. Pinaghandaan ko po yun para sa inyo. Now, I really want to grab this opportunity to thank everybody for supporting my channel. You guys, we've been really, really growing, and I appreciate all the love and support all the kindness from all of you guys. Maraming maraming salamat po and I'll see you again next time. You guys stay safe. Thank you so much you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. Happy Roman channel. You're already here. You might as well subscribe. Hashtag Team cool Talk. Give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends. Let me know what you guys think. You put them down in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to check out the other playlists I created for you. I'll be putting the links on the description box or so simply click this icon button right here. Let's connect. Follow me on all my other social media accounts. Everything is at Neil Gabe. I'll see you again.